Hello and welcome to Tea with Tess, a weekly gathering of women across the world. I'm Tess Yana, co-senior pastor of Link Church and the founder of the Link Sisterhood and Tea with Tess. This moment was created with the heart to encourage and equip you in your own personal faith journey. As we explore God's Word, I want to encourage you to lean in, subscribe and keep showing up as we go somewhere beautiful together. This is a place where you'll hear from me and some of my special friends that are near to my heart. For more information and resources, why don't you visit teawithtest.com or connect with me on Instagram, Tessiana. Thank you, it's so nice to see you all. So if you haven't commented, commented because then I can see your face and see your name and celebrate you and talk about you. Oh yes, no listen, my diary's also gone mad. And let me tell you, um, it only gets worse November, right? That's why we are going to be talking about some very beautiful things and then over the next few weeks um, around this idea of ordering our private world because, oh, is the public world not demanding? Oh, Katie, that's okay. I just have missed your beautiful face. I'm excited to see you. Just come say hi. Okay, I'll definitely be there on Sunday. What am I doing? I'm on worship on Sunday. And, and it's baby D on Sunday and it's baptism service. So all the things are happening. Really exciting. So girls, I just wanted to give you a little rundown of what to expect with Tea with Tess over the next few weeks. Um, I must be honest, I keep looking at myself. I'm distracted by what's going on with my hair. But anyway, um, we are going to be doing a series called Ordering My Private World. Hello, Bianca. So lovely to have you with us. Bianca gifted me with some flowers yesterday just to say thank you for Tea with Tess, which I think is so kind, but so unexpected. So thank you for doing that. Um, I always get so blown away when people think this space is amazing because <laughs> I literally just feel like I ramble on about my hair and the craziness of that. But anyway. Um, okay, amazing, Reg. So glad to hear that Daylight Savings has been changed. Um, so we're going to be going into a series over the next few weeks called Ordering My Private World. And I'm going to tell you why I've chosen to do this. It's, it's a personal story, but I think it will resonate with you. I'm hoping to have a guest, a very beautiful girl that some of you may know. I can't say her name because if she isn't available, it's going to be a bit of a letdown. But I'm very excited to have a guest, hopefully this um, next week. But I will let you know. Um, she's amazing. Hello, Annie. Uh, Annie from the Netherlands. So lovely to see you. Um, but I really want to take us through this material. It's uh, not my own. Um, it's actually inspired by a book I read many years ago, but it's something that I picked up after I went to the Karoo. I actually went and bought it because I've lost my copy, which meant I gave it away and I can't remember who I gave it to. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I want to take us through this material. It's, it's a book written by George MacDonald and it's called Ordering Your Private World. You've probably read it, but I want to talk through some of the ideas and really pose some interesting questions to you. And I want to do it through the months of November and December because they are crazy months and they're very demanding. And I feel like if we're not careful, we can get swept up in the storm of craziness and we can lose sight of the importance of what it means to take care of our souls and take care of our hearts and really um, ensure that the most important, of us, important part of ourselves is healthy and strong. Hello, Nick, and hello, Jermaine. So lovely to have you all here this morning. So we're gonna do a series I'm not even changing the title, I'm calling it Ordering a Private World because the material is so important. If you want to, I would highly suggest you go and buy this book and read it because over the next one, two, three, four, five, six weeks, we're going to be understanding and looking at some of this material and diving into scripture and seeing what God says about who we are and why, why it's so important to order our private world. And hopefully we'll have a little guest in between. So. We have seven weeks left of Tea with Test this year. Can you believe it? Seven weeks. And then I'm going to be breaking over the 22nd and 29th of December and the 5th of Jan. Three weeks there will be no Tea with Test, okay? I'm doing this strategically because the week before Christmas is very busy for our church and our family. And then I'm taking a two-week break so that I can go and rest and recuperate and make sure that I'm strong and healthy and um, ready for a new year. Hello to everyone jumping on us. We've got Lynn and Linda, Jax Wilkes. So lovely to have you with us. 
Okay, so I want to jump in because every week is going to be jam-packed and I want to leave you with good questions. I hope that you've got a notebook because I love you. If you do one thing with this over these next weeks, I want you to do this. I want you to write down the questions that I ask you and I want you to take time to go and think about them, to pray through them, to really allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you and lead you in the direction that you need to go. Okay, so don't just let me be the one who does all the talking and then you go away and you go, oh, that was nice, yay. And you just carry on being busy, frustrated, wondering why you're on the brink of burnout, <laughs> if you're anything like me. Thanks, guys. I've actually had so many beautiful breaks this year, but they've been so necessary. Um, and uh, I'm at the point now where I really believe God is doing a reset in my life so that I walk into next year with a different strategy and a different gait. So a gait is the way in which you walk. It's your stride, it's your pace. And I really felt God speak to me about that. And it's not that I have to um, slow down in, a, you know, in its entire entirety. I don't think that's entirely possible in, in, the, certain, in the season of life I'm in. But I do think that he, that I can, I can walk in a different way. I can, I can change my gait. I can change my stride. I need to look at my cadence. And he's just been speaking to me about all these things. And I want to set this up with a story. So you'll know that I was in the Karoo recently, and um, it was such a beautiful time with families, uh, friends of ours, and it was a really well deserved moment for our family, a break. We just really needed that moment together. Um, and I remember I said to you a few weeks ago, it felt like it was the right place at the right time with the right people. And God used that moment, I believe, to really highlight to me kind of the state of what was happening internally. And we'd had this beautiful um, moment where we danced in the dust and um, it, was quite, it was quite significant um, for me just to like, you know, feel like I could just you know dance my way through <laughs> through the dryness of what I felt it was like quite a symbolic moment anyway we're sitting at dinner that night it was it was outside under the stars and we began to speak about how this moment was significant for each of us and um, at the table I began to cry and I just have these moments in my life that I know they lack they like these moments where the, the lights go on or I, I'm suddenly acutely aware that something's not right or something's um, out of kilter and that a change needs to take place. And although I'd known for a while that I was very tired, that, my, um, that I was not living in a sustainable way, the pace of my life wasn't helpful, some of the decisions we'd made as a family were Although they were right for the season, <clears throat> they were putting incredible pressure on me personally. And uh, <clears throat> I arrived at the crew not well. Like, not to harp on about myself, but uh, I've had like eczema all over my body. Uh, um, I'm not sleeping. Uh, um, I'm incredibly anxious, uh, very stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time and so that obviously affects my, my uh, emotions and how I react to certain things. I think um, increasingly I've grown more and more um, subdued and and kind of foggy in my thinking. Anyway, that's a lot of that's diet related and all the things that I know to change. So anyway, we're sitting at this table and I start to cry and I just realize actually this is not, this is not the whole life that I want. Like, I know what I want. I know what I've, I'm called to. I know what I believe God has placed on my heart. And they're big and beautiful things. But, but to feel burnt out and to feel so exhausted and to feel so at the end of myself and to, and to almost find myself there time and time again, I just had this, like, really strong, confronting moment where, where I realized this is not what I want. I want I want to feel alive and I want to have energy and I want to um, I want the fullness of life has, but I, I don't want to live depleted within my soul. No it, the soul my soul and the health of my heart is too important to me and I know that it's important to God. And so 
I have this moment, things are not as they should be, what am I gonna do about it? Anyway, come back to the come back from the career and there's a couple of weeks of just bumbling along and then anyway it happens again, we're sitting at dinner with friends and we're talking and I start to cry again. And anyway, you would think that the first time was enough to get me to get my myself moving, but it wasn't. But the next morning I woke up on Monday and I lay in bed for a long time. And I said to Jesus, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you and I just need the next step. And I just, I just felt him give me little, it's like he gave me little keys, little, little solutions. And they weren't big things. They were just little things. It was like, phone your friends, Larry and Tracy. They've helped me with my diet and just getting on top of my health many times. They're incredible. Phone Lara and Tracy, phoned her. She said, oh, amazing, we've got a cancellation today, you can come at two. And at the same time, this book that I read nearly 10 years ago popped into my head. I drove to the store, bought it. Anyway, I've been reading over the past couple of weeks and it's really spoken to me and I felt so stirred to share some of the content with you because I actually feel that I'm not alone, that there are so many of us so exhausted and flat and fatigued and emotionally numb because of the season that we've gone through over the last two years that we've we've really not we're not realizing how much how much we've lost how much we're lacking and so and how busy we've got i feel like there was that little window period of time we were stuck in mauritius but we couldn't do anything i couldn't go anywhere all I could do was read my Bible, chat to you on your test, kind of help my kids do school here and there, but there was no racing around in the car. There was no jumping from activity to activity. There was no ability to see people and move from place to place. You, if you can resonate with this, you'll know what I'm talking about. That period of hard lockdown was almost, it was, it was the slowest time. And then it's been busy. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> I want to read to you about this this thing that he calls the sinkhole syndrome and I want to know if you can relate to this if you can see this unfolding in your life okay like I said please go and get this book it is so helpful we cannot live with empty souls and I believe it's going to be incredibly helpful so, and then I'm going to give you a few things we're going to do after this once I've shared it. So, so the sinkhole syndrome, let me talk, tell you about this. The residents of a Florida apartment building awoke to a terrifying sight outside their windows. The ground beneath the street in front of their building had literally collapsed, creating a massive depression that Flor Floridians call a sinkhole. Tumbling into the ever-deepening pit were automobiles, pavements, sidewalks, and lawn furniture. The building itself would obviously be the next to go. Sinkholes occur, scientists say, when the underground streams drain away during seasons of drought, huh, causing the ground at the surface to lose its underlying support. Suddenly, everything simply caves in, leaving peop people with a frightening suspicion that nothing, not even the earth beneath their feet, is trustworthy. There are many people whose lives are like one of Florida's sinkholes. It is likely that at one time or another, many of us have perceived ourselves to be on the verge of a sinkhole-like cave-in. This was my realization in the Karoo, that there is a sinkhole about to happen in my life where everything that I'm standing on is about to give way, okay? In the feelings of numbing fatigue, a state of apparent failure, or the bitter experience of disillusionment about goals or purposes, we may sense something within us is about to give way. We feel we are just a moment from collapse that will threaten to sweep our entire world into a pit. Sometimes there seems to be little that can be done to prevent such a collapse. What is wrong? If we think about it for very long, we may discover the existence of an inner space, our private world, about which we were formerly ignorant. I hope it will become apparent that if neglected, this private world will not sustain the weight of events and stresses that press upon us. I don't know if you know this to be true, but we have what is called an, a private world and a public world. The public world, girls, is everything that you can see. It's visible. 
it's um, the persona we put on, it's the way we show up, it's measurable, you can evaluate it, it's what we compare ourselves to. The private world puts demands on us, daily demands that shot law. The, the private, um, not the private, the public world puts demands on us. It, put dem, it puts demands on us, demanding our time, demanding our money, demanding our resource, demanding our energy. For all intents and purposes, my, I need to tell you about my public world. It's what you can see. It's the, it's the Tess who gets up every Wednesday and puts herself in front of her phone and speaks hoping that, you know, God would somehow intersect a human heart on the other side. And, you know, it's the Instagram posts that you see. It's perhaps the, the me that you see walking around in, in the shops and I look like I have it all together. It's perhaps the me that you see at church where I've put on that extra effort in what I'm wearing or, you know, I... Uh, I know that it's important to show up in a certain way and so I smile and, I, and I'm present and I'm passionate because I believe in what I do. Um, that's the public. It's what you see. It's not, it's not necessarily fake. It's not necessarily fake. I've wrestled with this. I'm like, is what I'm, is, I'm, I'm so empty inside. I'm feeling so, I'm feeling so exhausted. I'm so dry. Is what I'm putting out to people fake? No. I'm trying to be what I know I am, but I'm doing it from a place of complete and utter drought. Am I making sense? The test that you see right now, this is not the fake test. This is a test who knows how to show up, who knows how to put her best foot forward, who believes in what she does, who believes the call of God has been placed on her life. And so she, she, she stands before people and she speaks a better word and she encourages and she posts posts that are life giving and she uh, speaks the gospel and, and shares the word with conviction because it's truth. And it's who I know that I am, it's who I know that I'm called to be, but I'm doing it from a place of effort and striving because there's nothing here. It's dry and it's, empty because I've not been pouring in to the part of me that is so crucial to living a sustained and healthy and whole and holy life. So we have our public world. It's what you see. It's not necessarily fake, but it's what you see. And then we have the private world. That is our inner world. It's our most spiritual part of ourselves. It's our more spiritual nature. It's where our values come from. It's where they sit. It's where we house the things that are most important to us. It's the place, the starting point of where every decision is made. It's where all of our choices begin. Our inner world is less demanding though. It doesn't shout as loudly when it's neglected like the private world. The private world is shouting at us for our money and our time and our attention and our resource and our energy. And we continue to give in to its demands because we're comparing ourselves to everyone else and we've got this barrage of social media at our fingertips all day long. We, we would be naive to believe that the most publicly active person is the most privately spiritual and healthy. That is what I've come to believe and know to be true. But sometimes the people that are most publicly active are not the most privately healthy and spiritual. And so, girls, just a disclaimer, when you're looking at people online from afar, or you've just seen them once off here and there, don't make assumptions. Social media is the highlight reel. It is the highlight reel. It's a place where we sell the best of ourselves, where we promote the best of what we know, where we try and gain more influence because that's what's seemingly most important. Social media is not the truth. The word of God is the truth and we cannot shape ourselves and our lives of what we see online. Please, if you ever come onto this platform and you look at me and my life and you try and shape something for yourself of what you see of me online, can I say to you and I I say this from the bottom of my heart because I love you. It is so dangerous to do that. Please don't do that. It places too much pressure on me and it's completely sabotaging the gold of what God has put on your life, of who you were created to be. Don't do that. 
Be who you were created to be. Discover the Holy Spirit life of God that is living and active in you. Don't base your life off me and what I'm doing or what I may look like. In Jesus' name. And so I want to read to you this quote from Oscar Wilde. It's so profound. He says, The gods had given me almost everything, but I let myself be lured into long spells of senseless and sensual ease. Tired of being on the heights, I deliberately went to the depths in search of new sensation. What the paradox was to me in the sphere of thought, perversity became in the sphere of passion. I grew careless of the lives of others. I took pleasure where it pleased me and passed on. I forgot that every little action of the common day makes or unmakes character, and that therefore... What one has done in the secret chamber, one has some day to cry aloud from the housetop. What we do in our secret chamber will affect what happens on the housetop, what people see. So we can, we can only sustain what happens on the outside for a certain amount of time, for a season, if we are neglecting our inner world. We cannot sustain, I cannot sustain who God has created to me to be, the passion that he's put there, the conviction of the calling, the, the, the desperation to see women empowered, the, the, the real joy and hope that life could look different for women here on earth, that families could be made. I cannot sustain all of that in my everyday if I'm neglecting the innermost parts of my life, my heart and my soul. And so I want to read to you three scriptures and I'm going to give you questions and I'm going to say go and I'm going to ask you to think and I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm not here to give you answers. I'm here to give you thought provoking, word inspired, God truth and material that would cause you to perhaps think differently and reorder some of the private so the public and follow suit and not the other way around we're allow allowing our private our public world to lead our private world how i am so busy on the outward that that dictates how i live on the private that dictates how much i get to read of my bible the amount of silence and solitude i allow into my life the rhythms that i put in place it should be the other way around our private world should and dictate how our public world is lived out. So I want to read to you these three scriptures and I'm going to give you some questions and you are like the most studious, beautiful bunch are going to go and think about them. Right, Ephesians 1 verse 13. I'm reading all of these from the Amplified Version. Maybe someone can just pop these in the comments. Ephesians 1 verse 13. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, and as a result, believed in him, were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, the one promised by Christ as owned and protected by God. I want you to hear this loud and clear as you go on this journey of understanding what it means to order your private world. You do not go alone in your striving and in your own effort. You have the Holy Spirit. The seal of promise has been given to you. It's called the Spirit of God stamped over your life. You are owned and protected, your mind owned and protected by him. And he will lead you and guide you as you go through what God wants you to go through and what he wants you to discover in this season. The next scripture is John 14 verse 26. But the helper, the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything I have told you. The way of Jesus, the way of living where the, where the burden is light, where there is rest and there is fullness of life, where there is healing and wholeness and holiness to behold, is available to us not through our own effort, but by the power of the, our helper, the Holy Spirit, who's going to take everything that Jesus brought to us here on earth and infiltrate it into our lives because he is our comfort, our advocate, our intercessor, our counselor, our strength, and our stand by. He is the one who's going to teach us everything that we need to know. You do not pick up a book like this and have to get it right. You pick up a book like this and you allow the Holy Spirit to come and take you on a journey and everything changes.
And the final thing I want to read to you this morning is from Ephesians 3. It says this, for this reason, grasping, it's from verse 14. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 21. For this reason, grasping the greatness of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together, I bow my knees in reverence before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with the power through his spirit in your inner self. Let me read that again. May he grant you, this is my prayer, I pray it every day. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, your indwelling in your innermost being and personality. That is my prayer. Pray that the Lord God would strengthen and spiritually energize me with the power through his spirit in the most inner part of myself, in my innermost being and personality, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And may you have, and may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints the width, the length, the height, the depth of his love, fully experiencing the amazing endless love, and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all we could dare to ask or think beyond our greatest powers, hopes or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us in our innermost being. To him be the glory in the church in Jesus Christ in all generations forever and ever. Amen. We read that scripture now to him who is able to do all things and we think, oh, he's going to just give us more money or give us more time or take us on a holiday or give us our dreams and all the things. And you know what? He can do all of that. It's easy for him. God knows our desires. But I think when it says now to him who's able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than we could ever dare to even imagine or hope, I think it's talking about that reality of being strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in our innermost selves. Won't he do it? I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. I've spent the bulk of this year trying to fix myself internally. It doesn't work. He's the one who can do exceedingly abundantly more. And, and his, his heart and his will and his way is to strengthen and spiritually energize us with the power of his, by the power of his spirit in our innermost beings. I want to ask you this morning because I'm preaching to myself, actually, surrender to his work. Surrender to his work. Because there is work to be done, but we don't have to do it. Surrender to his work. Yes, pick up the material. Yes, create space. But, but, but do it. Do it by the power of his spirit. Right, questions. Get your pen and paper ready. I'm going to read fast. <laughs> oh, you guys. I read a quote the other day, and it wasn't a quote. It was just a statement that arrested my soul. It said, beware of the barrenness of a busy life. I was like, wow, the barrenness of a busy life. It is barren. Busyness is barren. That's the truth. Right, questions. Guys, also please, I'm not some um, incredible human that makes up all of this stuff on my own. I'm using his material. So uh, some of these questions are his and some of them are mine. Okay? Right, the first thing I want you to write down. What enemies to bringing order to your private world do you need to identify? What are the things stopping you from bringing order to your private world. For example, it could be Netflix. It could be um, 
It could be something that's happening at work. It could be uh, an, an over, you've overcommitted yourself with your children. Perhaps it's the pace of life that you live. I don't know, but I want you to I want you to identify the things that are stopping you from bringing order to your private world. And I also want you to write down the things that are draining your private world. What is leaving you feeling drained? Write them down. For me, I wrote a list. This is leaving me feeling drained. Right. And then it was like, okay, what am I going to do about those? And I started to look at solutions so that I could find order, so that I could create more space to find order in my private world. So that's the first thing I want you to write down. The second thing is, um, sorry, I have underlined them. What are some fears that may have prevented you from seeking order in your private world? What are you fearing right now? What are perhaps you scared of facing in yourself? I want you to identify, don't, and just write it down. Just, you know what, you're just owning the moment. You're just bringing it to the light. The Holy Spirit will work with the things that we bring. Surrender to his work. And then I want you to, um, I want you to answer, which public worlds are screaming for your attention? Like what is screaming for your attention? What's too loud in your life? So they're all kind of similar questions. But it's just important for us to think about them. And then I'd love you to go over those three scriptures that I read. They are in the comments. And, and really, just, uh, really just pray for a revelation of the role of the Holy Spirit. Because I believe he wants to do a deep work in all of us. And he's... He's going to do it, but we need to surrender to him and his work and not have to try and strive and fix things on the outside. This is an inner work, an inner work. This is not making the outside look better. This is not just putting on some makeup so that you can't see my pigmentation. This is an inner work that the Holy Spirit does as we surrender to his power. Amen. Okay, I'm going to pray for you because we're running out of time. Every week it's going to be the same, but I'm going to quickly check. I think I just got a confirmation of a speaker. I do. Okay. We, I don't know if you've heard about Caitlin DeBeer. She is an amazing woman that I've met in the last few weeks. And she is the author of the book, Walk Out, or the devotional Walk Out on the Water. Many of you have read it. And she uh, has material that she's bringing out around um, owning your truth, owning your season. And I felt like it would be an amazing gift to bring her to this season of Tea with Tess as we talk about ordering your private world. I think she's modeled some of this. I think she has gone on a journey of this. And so next week, we'll be welcoming Caitlin DeVere to Tea with Tess, and then I'll continue the study of ordering your private world with you up until Christmas. And so I'm gonna pray for you, Lord Jesus. I pray that for every woman that, we would, that would go on this journey, that would surrender to your work, that there may be, that the outward and the inner would become one. We want first and foremost, God, to be at peace with ourselves. And so I pray that you would strengthen and spiritually energize us by the power of your Holy Spirit in our inner selves, in our innermost being, and in our personality. I thank you that you would come and dwell in our hearts and do a deep, and powerful and profound thing in each and every one of us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our advocate, that you are our counselor, that you are our intercessor, that you are the one who strengthens. And so we partner with you. We partner with you, Holy Spirit, and we say, would you come and do what only you can do? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, girls. It was fast and furious. I hope you found something that could be helpful in there. Order the book if you want. I know it's available on Take A Lot. I actually found this at Bargain Books, I think. And so let's go on a journey together to Christmas. I know you won't regret it. And I will see you. I will see you next week because I'll be introducing Caitlin to you. But I look forward to going on this journey with you. Have a wonderful week and we will see you soon. Bye.